Hi everybody, we're back. Episode 2. We are live streaming today all about rice. Now, a lot of people get confused about how to cook rice. Confused and frustrated because whether they buy the rice packs with the directions on the packaging or they're following people's recipes or they're told a tried and true perfect recipe. Problem is, nine times out of ten it won't work. And there's a number of really good reasons why it won't work. Doesn't mean the recipe's wrong. It doesn't mean you don't know how to cook. What it means is you're looking at the wrong things when you're looking at the recipe and, and the perfect technique for cooking rice. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about different kinds of rice and we're going to talk about what in your environment is going to make you have the perfect rice. So, if you have any questions, let me know and I will address them as we go. Again, I don't anticipate there's going to be a lot of uh, activity on this video because it's only our second one. So, uh, if you do have any questions, comment below the video after I post it and then I can address your questions. Okay? This video will also be posted on YouTube as well as um, on our website. So you'll be able to go back and forth and uh, check it out there. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is the types of rice. Now, so I don't forget, I've got my handy dandy sheet here because I want to make sure that we've got it all right. Okay, so your, your typical rice found in the grocery store is the white, white rice. And confusion comes when you find out you've got things like converted, instant, uh, parboiled, long, medium, short. I mean, what does all this mean? The first thing you have to know is that all rice is either long, medium, or short grain. It just is. So, that information is important for when you're deciding what to do with your rice. Um, so we'll get to that. If you're looking at a package and it says converted rice, uh, they'll either call it converted or parboiled. And what that means is that the rice grains are soaked, steamed, and then dried. Whereas your regular rice that's not converted or parboiled or anything like that has been dried, just dried, okay? So converted or par parboiled are the same thing and they have been soaked, steamed, and then dried. Instant rice, now, okay, converted and parboiled are not fully cooked though. They're just partially cooked and this is important in the cooking times, okay? The instant rice has been completely uh, cooked through. So, it's going to be a lot faster to cook, but instant rice tends to have a bit of a negative as far as the texture goes. It ends up kind of being, it's not smooth and creamy, it would be more pebbly, I want to say. It just doesn't have a very nice texture to it. So, Instant rice can be a bit of a bear to deal with. So, if you want to cut down your cooking time by a little bit, go with converted or parboiled. But, quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. It's, you're not saving that much time. You might as well just get regular rice that hasn't been pre-cooked. Um, the other thing is, you're going to be dealing with brown rice. Now, I just want to get my myself sorted on my feed here and just give me a second here because I'm going to try a little experiment with my feed uh, videos here we are okay so let's just see okay sorry I was hiding half my face okay so Brown rice. What, what the heck is brown rice as compared to white rice? Brown rice still has the husk on it, okay? And this is the bran. 
And it's really important because white rice has that taken off. Now brown rice is going to be more a nutrient dense because it hasn't had the husks taken off of it and that's where you get the extra fiber and the extra vitamins and minerals. So that can be really important. Uh, problem is you have to take into account that it's going to take a lot longer, usually double the time to cook brown rice. Okay, so you have to account for that in the cooking. So that actually turns a lot of people off. But when you use what I'm going to show you, it's really quite hands-off time. So it's not a big deal. I mean, you just have to account for it in the cooking time for your meal plan, really. Um, now the other thing to consider with brown rice is that because the husk is still there, it will spoil much quicker than white rice because the husk has natural oils in it. The oils will go rancid. So brown rice shelf life is about six months, whereas white rice, if you seal it and whatnot, it can be more than a year easily, okay? So the other thing is when you're dealing with Specialty races like wild races, those are not actually races. They're the seeds of grasses that are native to North America. So it's not even really a rice. However, it does usually follow the same recommendations as a brown rice as far as cooking goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to address cooking white rice today. And what we're going to do is in addressing the white rice, we're going to address all the problems associated with cooking rice. And you do not need a fancy rice cooker. You do not need a machine to do it for you because every time you've tried to do it, it's gummy, raw, what have you. What we're going to do is we're going to create a foolproof method for you to create it in your own kitchen. And it's going to work every time. I used to actually, it wasn't until two or three years ago that I started cooking my own rice without a rice cooker. Because until then, I just, I it frustrated me because everybody's saying you need a 2 to 1 ratio or a 2 and a half to 1 ratio. The box says a 2 to 1 ratio, water to rice and whatnot. And then all these recipes are going to say, oh, no, that's not the way you do it. And if it's for this rice, oh, and it, it just made my head spin. So I just didn't bother. So first thing, let's look at long, medium and short. I have two examples. I have a white long. Actually, yeah, I have a white long, a brown long and a white medium. Now. Long grain rice is used for making side dishes, typical side dish. Uh, the medium, however, is what you're going to do things like rice pudding. You know, so many people online sit there and say, I tried your recipe, whoever's recipe for rice pudding, and after the amount of time, it was still crunchy, it wasn't done cooking yet. Oh my god, I'm so frustrated. Now. Part of that, and especially if you do it in a slow cooker where you're, you're committing like seven hours to this recipe and, and then you come out at the end of the day and it's still crunchy rice. That's not cool. So problem is you have to use medium grain rice because that kind of rice can take the treatment of a slow cooker. Now, if you want to cook your, your longer grain rice regular, and pre-cook it and then incorporate it into a rice pudding recipe that calls for pre-cooked rice, fine, use long grain. But when you're doing it in the oven or whatever, you want to use the shorter grain rice, the medium grain rice, I'm sorry, because it cooks better, it ends up creamier, it doesn't, it still holds its shape but not as much as a long grain rice would. So you want to get the medium grain. Short grain rice is very sticky, very, very high in starch. And so you want to use that for things like sushi, okay, where you want a sticky rice. So if a recipe says you're going to make this and sticky rice, you know you're going to go probably with a short grain rice. 
And if a recipe says use a medium or short grain rice and you only have long, you have to be prepared that it's not going to work because it, it, it's done that way on purpose. You're using the medium and the short on purpose. So what I like to do is have a stock of long and medium grain rice so that whatever I want to be doing with it, it's available. And of course I keep the brown rice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a look at my, okay, hang on, let me see how am I going to work this. Do, 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 do. Let me do so. I'm going to turn you around. There's the snow again. So much snow, I can't believe it. Okay, so what we've got here oops, is we've got, oh, there we go. We have some long grain white rice, we have brown rice, and we have medium grain rice. Sorry for the focusing. And here you can see the different sizes. Okay, so the top two are definitely uh, longer than this bottom one. And that is your medium for rice puddings and things like that. So, let's turn you around. That's the noise. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so now we know what the rices look like. There we go. Uh, why doesn't the rice work out? Okay, here's the explanation. When you're cooking rice, you're going to use a certain pot and pan, yeah? And you're going to use a certain stove. And you're going to use your, envir your kitchen environment, which is going to have a certain humidity. Okay? The key to cooking white or brown rice is the fact that they all absorb the same amount of water. No rice will absorb a different amount of water. So the whole idea with having uh, different ratios for different kinds of rice is, is kind of ridiculous because Brown rice does not have the capacity to absorb more water than white rice. It's just a fact. It's a scientific fact. So, why do they say add more water to brown rice than white rice? Because you got you have to cook it longer. And what they're allowing for is evaporation of the water. The longer it's cooking, the more water is going to be evaporated. So, and and they're also counting on the fact that you don't have a lid for a pot that fits very well or you're using a rice cooker that has one of the vent holes or that has a series of vent holes. So you're going to be dealing with a certain amount of evaporation. The other thing that they're giving some wiggle room for is how hot your burners run. And one thing that we really advise is that you get to know your stove. Every stove you own is going to be different. And it's so funny because whenever I move into a new house, we move a lot. First thing I do is I have to cook something, cook a tried true recipe that on my new stove so I can figure out where's the where's the wheat burner, where's the really hot burner, which burner do I love, which burner is always consistent because every stove will have that and once you know which element does what on your stove you're gonna be a lot more successful with any recipes you try. Now my stove in this house, I cook my rice on the back right burner, always. I will not cook it on any other burner because they will run differently. And I have one, my weak burner, it never gets used because it just, it's not consistent and it's weak and it's, ugh, it's awful. And it doesn't matter whether you cook with gas or electric or induction or whatever, you have to get to know the different burners and how they react. So. You get to know how hot your stove runs, because the hotter means basically more steam you're gonna produce, which means more evaporation, right? So the more water that you're losing to the air means the more water you have to have in the pot. 
Now, if you have a tight fitting lid, however, hmm, that eliminates evaporation through an ill fitting lid. If you have a fairly consistent element, doesn't run too hot and you, you understand your elements, that's going to eliminate a lot of other evaporation. The basic ratio for cooking rice is one cup of rice to one cup of water. Now, when I say cup, I mean a consistent measure. If you want to use a coffee mug to scoop your rice, fine. That's one mug of rice to one mug of water. It's one to one ratio, no matter what. So that is where you start. Then you get a baseline for your setup. You cook a one to one rice, taste it. Is it, un is it not done completely? Is it overdone? Is there still water in the bottom? You know, what's going on with it? If it's dry, that means you need to add a little bit of extra water because your element runs hotter. If it's, uh, if it's undercooked, you may have, but it still has water there, then you may have to add a little bit of time. So you have to play with the one-to-one -one ratio until you understand what it is for your thing. Your stove, how well your, your, your lid fits with your pot, the whole nine yards. Now, what we're gonna also do today is eliminate one of the factors, and that's the ill-fitting lid. And we're gonna show you how to fix that so that's not an issue anymore. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through the process of preparing white rice. It's a one-to-one -one ratio and for 15 minutes. Now, need coffee. Um, the first thing we do, and many, many, many people skip this. If you're not making sticky rice, you're just making regular white rice, then you need to rinse this puppy. You have to get the, the surface starch off the rice. And it does a couple things. It cleans the rice, first of all, uh, from the manufactured process. And it eliminates that top layer of starch so that your, your grains won't clump together. It's the starch that holds the rice grains together. We want to eliminate that because our goal today is to make fluffy rice, okay? Not sticky sushi rice. If your goal is to make sticky rice, you would not rinse your rice, period. End of story. If you're going to rinse um, brown rice, let's say. Let me just get my brown rice for you here. Okay, brown rice, right? I keep all of my rice in their own jars and I have little directions on it. If you're gonna rinse brown rice, now where's the starch? The starch is under the husk. So that means you're rinsing it basically to clean it. If you wanted to shorten the time for how long it takes to cook brown rice, you could soak it for an hour, and it does, it, it lowers the amount of time needed for sure, for sure. But you're not gonna, when you swish around brown rice and water, you're not gonna see all that starch floating around because that's underneath the, the husk. But you will clean the rice, which, you know, I recommend. But, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get busy. We are going to uh, do the first step. Okay, got our pot. Let's get, let's get cooking here, because we're gonna do this in real time. You're gonna see it's gonna work, okay? And here's our rice. Dump the rice in the pot. Okay, so the next step, and we'll see if you can see this. I'm going to put this in the sink. Uh, Fill it about, I don't know, halfway. Halfway. Okay, now I'm going to turn you around. Okay, so already just there, just filling up with water, you can see the starch. Okay, so my recommendation is I always give it a good old swirl. Okay. Okay, and I'll sit there and rub it in between my fingers to loosen up some of this starch. 
and you can see all of that starchy water coming out. And that's what's going to make your rice sticky and clumpy. And if you're looking for um, fluffy rice, you don't want any of this stuff. So hmm, it takes like 20 seconds, but it's worth it. So look at how cloudy that is. Okay. So I'll put this back up here and I'll turn you back around. Okay, so now I'm going to take this handy dandy guy and I'm just dumping the rice in here. Okay? Get rid of that water. And if you have particularly um, starchy um, rice, you can just run it under here for a minute. And you, see, you can still see starchy water coming out. Done. Just jiggle it. Get rid of a bunch of the water. Okay. So we're just gonna dump it in there. That's it. Okay. So now I'm taking the same amount of water, exact same amount of water. Okay. And I'm dumping it in here. I'm going to scrape down the sides, get all the rice into the water. Okay, now I'm going to do a handy dandy switch over and bring you over here to the stove. Now, I'm switch you over here. Oh, no, wrong, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get this right. Now, let's just see here. Okay. Now, this is my back burner. Okay, my favorite rice burner. Simple as that. There we are. Okay, so we've got this puppy on the burner. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put about a quarter teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna put this puppy on high, okay? Now, the lid is not on yet, okay? The lid's not on for a good reason. We need to be able to see when it boils, okay? So, we're gonna wait until it boils. And we're gonna, now at this point, you, we could have just used, we could have used chicken stock or other seasonings. We could have thrown some ginger in there. We could have done a lot of things, but we're not going to because this is just basic rice. No fancy ingredients so that you can see that it just plain works. Okay, so let's come down from here and then I will show you once it comes to a boil. Okay. And you know, I'm, I'm thinking of getting another camera so I can do the switcheroos, but for now, this is going to have to do. Okay, so, we're going to wait for that to boil, but we're going to keep an eye on it because the moment it boils, we're going to turn it to its lowest setting. Put the lid on and set the timer. We don't have a timer on yet, and that's going to happen as soon as it boils. You do not want it to be boiling there for two or three minutes and go, oh, well, wait, okay, now i got to put the lid on because that's going to affect the cooking time, okay? Now, if, if you do not have a tight-fitting lid, 
which a lot of us don't have. If you can see steam or your if your pot lid jiggles when you're boiling something, your your pot lid does not fit right. Okay? So I have got a handy dandy trick that will make it so that anybody's jiggling pot lid will fit with no problem. Okay. So oh hearing anything? Okay. Here's the trick. We have our Okay. We've got our pot. It doesn't fit right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a tea towel. And we're going to scoop it up and scoop it up like this. And we're going to grab hold of it and we're going to wrap an elastic around it. Now I use a silicone elastic, but you can use any elastic. Okay? There it is. There it is. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to use that on the pot. So, as I'm looking at my pot, what's it doing? Oh, we're starting. Look at that. It's coming. Alright, so Right now is the point where we're going to turn it to its lowest setting and we're going to set the timer for 15 minutes and we're going to put that lid on there. We're going to get that lid on there nice and secure. Okay? Now you notice there is no tea towel draping over and touching the burners or anything like this. That's why we use the elastic band. Okay? So you make sure, don't just put a towel on top and then let it hang off. Okay? So, there's our timer going. And now we wait. We don't do anything. I'm going to switch you over now. There we go. We don't do anything. Hands off, no peeking. Done. Okay, and this video will not stop. I will show you, it will work. And the key is gonna be, we've eliminated the lid being an issue. The, the only other issue will be how hot your element works. And most of them are not, don't have a huge, huge difference. So, you might notice a little bit of a difference. So if it's not quite as, um, tender as you would like uh, maybe but it's it's not dry it didn't get all dry on the bottom and didn't burn or anything just let it go for an extra two minutes two minutes is fine uh, then what you do is once you've got it pinpointed the exact times and everything like this do that all the time use the same burner the same pot, the same lid. If you need to use a towel trick, use a towel trick. That's fine. Uh, but do it consistently. Don't go and sit there and say, well, i got to cook something else on that element, and, and so I'm going to cook my rice on a different element. Because I'll tell you right now, something's going to go funky. It just is. Um, now, the ratio of water to rice works the same for brown rice or white rice. It doesn't matter. The only difference with brown rice is the cooking time. So here we set the timer for 15 minutes. For brown rice, I would set it for 25, 25 minutes, and then it'll have a 10 minute resting time. This will also have a 10 minute resting time. Um, and quite frankly, it can rest for longer than that. If you're going to have rice with dinner and you just want to have the rice part over and done with, you can cook it a half an hour ahead of time and then just let it sit there with the pot lid on. Just let it sit. It's, it's going to be fine. And uh, you can even do, do it ahead of time and then just reheat your rice. I do that a lot. And if you, do, if you do reheat rice, you can do it in the microwave. And the only thing suggestion I would have is that you heat it covered and sprinkle a little bit of water on the top because what's going to happen with the reheating is the reheating will evaporate some of the moisture, so you don't want that to happen. So 
you have to add in a little bit more. So you just sprinkle a little bit of water, cover it however you cover yours in, in the microwave, and reheat it. It's same thing if you want to do it on the stove. If you want to uh, toss it, then you can. And the only thing you have to do is make sure that you add a little bit Uh, you have a little bit of extra moisture. I'm getting some weird messages saying that I'm not on, but I obviously am. Uh, let me just deal with this. I don't know why it's doing this, but we'll sort this out. Okay. Facebook. Uh. Well, I don't know. I see I'm live. I've got a couple of people who are saying I'm not live. So I'm not real sure what's going on. Um, but if there is a problem, um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, we'll figure out the technicals later. Anyways, um, yeah, for the brown rice and the white rice, 15 minutes for white rice, basmati, jasmine, white, whatever. Unless you're dealing with parboiled or converted, because those are partially cooked already, so keep that in mind. Uh, the brown rice is going to be 25 with an extra, with the, the 10 resting, because the resting time is important because it is actually finishing the cooking process, okay? So that's really important. Um, that was my phone. I think people are having trouble getting on. I don't, I don't know what what the issue is. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this sorted out because we gotta wait for the rice anyways, right? Okay, so yeah, somebody's saying they're having an issue. Hang on, I wanna uh and we don't want people to have an issue. So let's see if we can sort it out. Our rice is cooking. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I I don't know. Okay, let's just see here. Okay, so. I'll sit there and say, yes, we are up. Maybe, maybe refresh the page. Uh, maybe refresh the page. There we go. And we'll just see what's going on, okay? So, where are we at? We're at 8.03. Okay. So, anything else I wanted to mention about... Okay, so we've got the lid. Now, one thing I want to tell you is on Cookery Nation, we have uh, cook perfect rice every time. And basically what it does is it explains what I've done here, except here you get to see it in real time. And I also included pictures of our handy dandy lid fix. Okay, so it's all there on the website. And uh, you'll be able to reference it, no problem, no problem at all, okay? So you'll notice what I do, I don't like to keep my rice in, um, in its packaging because it can be a bit of a bear whether you're dealing with, um, whether you're dealing with, uh, fluctuations in temperature that can be a that can be a terrible thing because what can happen is you end up with moisture in your packaging and that's terrible that's that can make your rice go rancid or you can get bugs 
and things like this. And I personally am a big bug phobic. So I like to have my cupboard sorted like this. And of course, because I have celiac disease, I can't have gluten getting into all of my stuff. But you'll see here, I have my quinoa and the brown rice and basmati rice and the jasmine or the white rice and a couple of other guys back there. And I also always include any information that's specific to my kitchen on my little labels. And that's always a really good idea. And it's really good too if you happen to have somebody coming into your kitchen and cooking. It can be really important. So uh, if somebody comes because you're sick or something, uh, it's, it's helpful for them to know exactly how to cook specific things in your kitchen. I've been to people's houses where I've had to cook and all of a sudden none of my perfected recipes work out because their stove is different, etc. So that's something you have to consider. As far as the other thing that we have on the website is also, this is probably backwards, that's okay, a rice generator. So once you've perfected how to cook rice, then you can go on and make your own favorite recipes. And what this does is it tells you to go and you select the type of rice you'd like to use, white, brown, jasmine, basmati. Then you choose your cooking liquid. And it's going to be the same, whether it's water, chicken stock, vegetable stock, coconut milk, nut, nut milk, it doesn't matter, okay? It's the same ratio. Whatever you would use for water, you would use for a different cooking um, liquid. Now, the thing is, that is going to really infuse your rice with some fabulous flavor. Really important. Then you get to create some flavor. And this flavor, this baseline flavor, comes from whatever cooking liquid you use plus the spices you use when you first start cooking. So I could have added slices of ginger, uh, some minced garlic, I could have added some lemon, I could have added a bunch of base flavors to my rice. Then you let it cook and then you get to add other things. So if, let's say you want to add uh, cooked corn or peas or some other fresh herbs like I like to put basil in my rice once it's done cooking uh, then you go for it and then uh, you can add other garnishes if you like so what will happen is you can go onto the website and print this out and it'll tell you all the different things you can do just to get you started because and, and there's no need to buy packaged um, rice kits there's absolutely no reason to once you understand how to cook your rice then you can add whatever you want to it and make it exactly how you want it. Okay, so we're at 326 left for this. Now, another interesting thing, you notice I had quinoa here. Quinoa works exactly the same way as rice does. It's the same ratio of water to quinoa. The only thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you rinse your quinoa because it's got soap and coating around each seed and you want to release that. So you want to make sure that you do the whole rubbing thing and, and really rinse it well before. Some people say to soak it for five to ten minutes. I don't necessarily soak it for five to ten minutes but I will give it a good rinse and rub it through my fingers and everything like that before I cook it. But it will take 15 minutes, exactly the same as white rice. No difference. Exactly the same thing you can do with quinoa, you can do like you do with the rice. Add a different cooking water, add some herbs and spices to the water, um, add some uh, other ingredients after the quinoa is cooked. Cool. And then add additional spices after that. It's all exactly the same. So once you perfect the rice, you're off to the races for quinoa as well. And it's just that easy. And quinoa too keeps really, really well. And again, add a little bit of water when you are reheating it and things like that. It freezes really, really well. If you wanted to make bigger batches, 
great. Go ahead and make bigger batches and then freeze in meal portions. It works perfectly well. Now I'm wondering if, if my straggler there managed to get on or not. Let's see. Let's see where they are. Uh, is that how... Yes, sir. Okay, let's see. Can you see? See us? Let's see if he can see us. Uh, I'm not sure if he can see us or not. Because he's not answering. Hmm. Well, one of the things I'd really appreciate is if you guys were trying to get in and you're having issues. I'm, I'm hmm, newbie, live feed newbie. Uh, I'm not sure what the issue is, but let me know if you were trying to get in because um, I'll try to figure that out. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll comment on this video so that we can figure out what the heck was going wrong. I'm not, I'm not real sure on what the issue is, but I'll find out. Okay, so we've got 15 seconds left. Uh, and that was our 15 minutes, just like that. And we're going to hear the beep. Okay. Timer off. And all we're going to do, take it off the heat. That's it. Don't touch it. Turn the stove off. There we go. And that's it. Now, I'm gonna, we're gonna leave this, we can put a timer on, and normally it is 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes, and I wonder, uh, let's see, let's see, I'm gonna invite somebody to this and see if he's having problems still. I want to see if he can come in. That's the problem with the technical bit. I'm not real clear on how this works. Uh, okay, there you go. We'll see. I sent him a very specific invite, and we'll see if that works. Okay, so. If you're making plain rice, how do you finish it off? When it comes out, when, when you take the, the lid off, I normally add a little bit of butter, uh, just a little pat of butter, and then salt. Yeah, we added salt already, but you have to season now, okay? So um, my most basic of basic rice, I put a little pat of butter, and I just put a sprinkling of basil in it, just all over. Because normally what I'm doing with my rice is I've got it probably with, like last night we had uh, meatballs with um, teriyaki sauce, oh so good, with rice. And I just want to have a little bit of dimension in the rice, so I add a little bit of basil, and then I put Put the rice on the plate, put the meatballs on the plate, cover it with sauce, with salad. Very good. Very, very, very good. Okay, coffee. So we're doing this live stream and it's like, um, well it's Tuesday, so we're four days before Christmas and I'm hoping that the rest of my deliveries will come in, but who knows. Uh, we got a pretty good dump of snow, and we had a deep freeze, not like the west, sorry guys. Uh, but now it's going to get warmer, which is nice. And uh, I put an order in on Amazon this morning. Do you think it'll get here in time? I don't know. We will see. We will see. Uh, 
Another thing I wanted to mention was salt. When I'm first cooking this, the rice, I will sometimes use um, kosher salt uh, in the water. Right? It's the larger salt, right? But I don't I don't use that to finish it. I'll use table salt or I'll grind salt on it. Because I don't know, personal preference, I don't like crunching the salt after the rice is cooked. So uh, I use the coarser salt in the beginning because it will dissolve into the water and then I add uh, I grind salt at the end so that uh, it's not so crunchy. So after we're done this, what I really like is for those of you who are really frustrated with making rice, I want you to try it just on the stove with a pot. If you don't have a great lid, do the lid trick. Do the lid trick and figure out your baseline. Which element is the best for you? And I mean, let's face it, rice is not expensive. You can make a couple of batches and if you're finding that it's undercooked, then you can just cook it a bit more is all. You're not going to you're not going to waste anything either. And you can you can easily put rice that's just a little bit undercooked into the freezer or the fridge because then you just finish off the cooking, right? It's not a big deal, but figure it out for your kitchen, figure it out for your pots and pans and your stove and perfect it for you. And then you can never sit there and say, well, I can't make rice because I don't have a rice cooker, which has to do it for me, or I can never figure it out and it's, it always screws up the recipe. And what you do is you take that knowledge to the recipes you find online. So you find a really great recipe for a certain style of rice with certain seasonings, let's say. And it says, the recipe says, you cook with one cup of rice to two cups of water. And the only thing that, that they're doing that is different at all is adding seasoning, right? A liquid and seasoning then go by what your recipe is for making basic rice. And if it's one to one or one and a quarter cups water to one cup of rice, whatever it is you figured out, don't worry about what the recipe says. And the only time you would worry about it is if they're using a special technique or uh, a, a special equipment. That's all. That's it. Um, if they're just making rice, but here is the most fantastic rice dish ever and it's like stovetop or you know, make rice and then add this. Well, use your recipe for rice. Use your quantities, use your measurements and timings and transfer that knowledge to all the recipes you come across. So you don't need to avoid recipes with rice anymore. And if you've got a hankering to make big batches, then great, make big batches. That's fine. Um, then all you need to do is, is store it. That's it. And what I like to do is any leftover rice too is I will just dump it into soups. That's it. And then and then if you have extra soup, you store it. You freeze it. You store it. It's all good. And that's all. That's all we do. Now we're looking at three minutes left. I don't know where. My my person went that is having such a hard time getting in. I invited him, but he doesn't seem to be able to get in. So, um, hmm, interesting. Okay, I don't know. Okay, so what if uh, what are our plans for the live feed? Because I still have I have three minutes. Three minutes left, people. That's all we have. Um, what I'd like to do is cover some of the basis for uh, the information, basic cooking skills and techniques, you know, whether it be um, prep work, preparing uh, vegetables and dicing onions and all of this stuff, or cooking full on meals. But I, what I will be doing is cooking you know, the side and the main all at the same time and the salad and being able to help you maneuver around cooking um, full-on meals. 
sorry, I just thought of something. Uh, cooking around full-on meals. So how do you manage your time? How do you do all of this, right? So we're going to help you be able to do that. And there are some really good tricks because sometimes people are great with making one recipe, maybe two recipes, but making a meal come together, that can be really difficult. So what we're going to do is help you to do that. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to make a live stream for all of our recipes that are on the website. And hopefully as we go and we gain steam and whatnot, we'll be able to get uh, more people involved so they can ask questions. I don't mind doing videos uh, to do follow-up questions and give more information about maybe a live stream that we didn't have a lot of people involved in, but questions came in. I will do uh, follow-up videos for that. That's not a problem. But 2017 is going to be all about us live streaming so that you guys can watch things happen in real time. So yeah, the videos are going to be probably minimum a half an hour, maximum maybe an hour, something like that, however long it takes to make a meal. But there's not going to be any of this magic of, you know, TV cooking magic. That's not going to happen. So, okay. We're down to our last 30 seconds, okay, for the rice. So, uh, what I encourage people to do is um, like us or follow us on Facebook, and then that way you can get notifications. I will figure out the bugaboo that's happening, why uh, some people aren't coming in. I bet you it's something as simple as I only made this uh, viewable to me, maybe. I don't know, but I don't want to... I don't want to hit finish just in case it ends and that's it and that would not be cool uh, because I'd like to be able to have this video on the website. And I mean if it turns out really bad then I'll just redo, I'll redo the live stream. That's fine. And we'll talk about cooking rice again. That's fine. I don't mind. Okay, there we go. Okay. There's the timer. And let's bring this over here so you can have a proper look see. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna turn you around. There we go. Okay. So there we go. Let's have a look. There we are. Look at that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to give this puppy a stir. Okay. Look at this. See, it's not burnt on the bottom. There's no water left on the bottom. See? So, what we do is I will put a little pat, um, a pat of butter, not much, you know, just that. And then we will put it in to here. And let it melt. And it just adds a bit of richness to the rice is all. And then I will do a little bit more salt. Grind that up. And my my basil trick. I just like a little bit of basil. And it doesn't, it's not overwhelming with basil. This just gives it a little bit of extra flavor but it'll go with anything it doesn't overpower anything so let's get a fork and have a look at these individual grains and like firmly See? It's not sticky, but it 
breaks really nicely. Keeps its form, but it's not chewy. See how easily it breaks up? And it's not all stuck together. And the reason it's not all stuck together is because we took off that outer starchy layer. Okay. Okay, I'm going to turn us around. When it comes time to cook rice, I want you to take time out before you need to cook rice so that you can figure out your baseline. Figure out your stove, uh, do our towel trick, so simple. If you ever get a jiggly lid, it doesn't fit right. Use the towel, use a clean towel. Always use a clean towel, of course. And remember to use your long grain rice for side dishes and your medium or shorts when you need sticky rice or dessert rice for rice puddings and whatnot. Okay guys, that pretty much sums it up. I'm going to put links to the website where you can find the information for you know, making your own flavor combinations as well as the articles about specifically about making rice to remind you. And then we will have this video within the post. And you'll be all set. You'll be making perfect rice in no time. And being able to accommodate other people's recipes in your perfect rice ratio. Okay, guys. We will talk to you later. I will let everybody know when the next live stream will be up. We hope to be doing this on a regular basis. Come join us. Ask questions. Ask questions below. And we will make sure that we answer them. Okay. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.